Hello, guys and gals, and this is a movie review. I almost said product review. I'm so used to doing product reviews because, as you can see, I've got a playlist of over 200 product reviews. And um, this is a movie review, actually, for um, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. I believe this is the first motion picture that Elvira, a.k.a. Cassandra Peterson, was in. Now, according to the um, extras... Cassandra Peterson, a.k.a. Elvira, was originally from Manhattan, Kansas. But anytime someone would ask, she would leave out the Kansas part, so everyone would think that she was from New York. Um, also, um, another thing I didn't know was that um, when Elvira was a child, um, there, was an, there was a mishap with boiling water meant to boil Easter eggs or something, and, and it spilled on her, so she got all these scars on her. I didn't realize that. And looking at any of her movies, you wouldn't know because they have they put makeup over the scars. Um, anyways, that's all beside the point, though. It just adds to her character as a person. And um, gives me even more admiration for her. Um, this is, as I said, the first Elvira movie. Um, the second was um, Elvira and the Haunted Hills, I believe. And I've done a review of that movie already. Um, so, yeah. This movie starts out with her doing her show, you know. Um, she had a an actual TV show where she would um, commentate or um, terrible movies like Invasion of the Killer Tomatoes and whatever it's called. Attack of the Killer, Killer Tomatoes, that was it. And stuff like that. So this movie starts with, you know, one of those, where she's commentating one of those those movies. Kind of like what Mystery Science Theater 3000 does, I believe. I don't know if I got that name right or not, because I haven't really seen that show very often. Um, but, so the movie starts there, and the um, TV station has a new owner. And the owner wants to, you know, get fresh or something with her and she won't have any part of that and so she just quits. Which puts her in a little bit of a financial bind because she finds out that she needs $50,000 in order to do a show in Las Vegas. But it just so happens that her Aunt Morgana, an aunt that she didn't even realize she had, ends up passing away and so she heads to Falwell, Maryland? It's either Maryland or Massachusetts and I'm sorry I don't remember which it is. Pretty sure it's Maryland to be honest. But it might have been Massachusetts. I just remember it started with M.A. And so she goes there, and she has this awesome car. It just breaks down in town, though, and um, so she doesn't really have any way to leave. Her aunt leaves her her quote-unquote recipe book and uh, um, her, um, uh, her mansion, which is a real fixer-upper, and her dog. So um, it's all really pretty good. Um, I will say this movie isn't exactly for kids. I mean, as if the, the jacket here doesn't convey that enough. There are a lot of stereotypes in it that are really funny. They're kind of tropish these days. Um, there's the whole trope of a small town, you know, and there being a morality squad. Um, a throwback, another... I say morality squad or whatever because that was in um, Guar's movie Phallus in Wonderland. Again, that movie is definitely not for kids. But um, that movie is meant more, meant more as a spoof, though. This one, I don't know. I think it's also meant to be a spoof. It is. It's. I found this to be a lot more scary, quote-unquote scary, than, say... Um, Elvira and the Haunted Hills. But I think that Haunted Hills was supposed to be more of a spoof of um, Vincent Price and, you know, some of the old cheesy horror movies. This is more of a fleshed out movie in itself. Anyways, um, the townspeople are all, you know, super moral and stuff like that. And of course, Elvira wears the, you know, the low cut dress and the big cleavage, you know, things that show her cleavage and stuff like that, which kind of drives the um, morality squad 
crazy, you know. And so they all tried to find ways to get rid of her. Anyway, she has this uncle, um, Vincent, who she calls Uncle Vinny, of course. And um, he wants the, uh, the recipe book. And um, so at first, Elvira is like, oh, yeah, you can have it for like 50 bucks. She, she wasn't really interested in it. But the, the dog ends up hiding the recipe book. So she doesn't give it away. The dog, um, Algonquin, who she calls Gonk, um, really is a major character in here. All the characters in this movie are fleshed out really well. There are some stereotypes, of course. Some of the um, people in the movie are um, stereotypical, but that's to be expected in a movie like this. There isn't any um, there isn't any nudity in this movie, just cleavage, as far as I know. Um, this movie was a little bit more adult than I'd say Haunted Hills was. Um, but yeah, actually, I, I really did enjoy this movie. Um, I thought that it was very well written, very well thought out, and it really fit the Elvira's theme, you know, of, um, just a sec here. Okay. But yeah. I'm going to move these bags all the way. Anyways, let me position this. I'm trying to regain my train of thought. Um, but yeah, a lot of the um, local teens they help Elvira out because they find her interesting, and um, so that's nice. But um, again, the city is really against her at first. Anyways, eventually, um, it does get a little bit scary because um, one of the characters, I won't say which one, actually turns into a demon, basically. And it, that, that part's kind of really, really creepy, or I found it to be kind of creepy. But it, it's kind of also cheesy, you know, because the movie isn't meant to be scary. It's more of a spoof, you know, and stuff like that. Um, and there's some really, really funny scenes, too. Um, but yeah. Um, I do want to put the warning out there that it isn't for kids. I don't think that there's any Elvira movie that's really geared towards children. And um, I think that's part of the um, of her gimmick, to be honest. And um, it's a good gimmick, really. Um, it was fascinating for me reading, the, going through the, the extra features, you know, and reading all about Elvira's history. You know, from her being a kid up to, you know, 2001 at least when um, Haunted Hills came out and I hadn't re didn't really realize that um, she was even in movies like um, Alan, um, Alan Quartermain and the City of and the Lost Cities of Gold I believe is what it was called and I really liked that as a kid I believe I think I remember that one there was one there was oh there was one I don't remember what it was called if you know what it was called then make then make sure you put it in the comments but I only remember that it did, it had this guy, and there was this girl that, um, I think it was called Jane in the Lost City. And, um, the gimmick was that Jane would always lose her clothes. She wouldn't be completely naked, of course, but she would always have mishaps and end up losing her clothes some way. So that was kind of like the gimmick. And I remember that movie was very, very funny. I don't know if I've ever actually seen Alan Quartermain and the City's Gold. I, I'm much less realized that Elvira was in it. Um, but it was surprising to see all of her filmography and thinking, wow. I mean, I she was even in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. And that goes back to her being in The Groundlings because um, The Groundlings is where a lot of comedians got their start. And I mentioned that in the other review I did, that um, a lot of the Saturday Night Live people, Pee Wee Herman, he got his start in The Groundlings. Um, I think, I'm not sure, but um, there was a scene in Pee Wee's Big Adventure where he was basically running from the um, security through all these different sets, and I think one of them might have been an Elvira set or something. I'm trying to remember where in that movie Elvira was, to be honest, but, um, but yeah, that's something I really need to look into. 
because I was surprised just to see exactly how many movies she she had been in. But back to this movie, um, it was a good watch, and I, I advise anyone, provide your of age, of course, to watch it because um, I found the movie fascinating, and I think it's actually aged really well. Um, but yeah, there's some genu genuinely funny scenes in it. Um, I'd, I'd like to see if Elvira has made any other movies because um, this this only went up to um, 2001, and I'm not sure if she's made any movies since or not. It'll be interesting to find out because um, between this one and and um, uh, Haunted Hills, it was like 13 years they were trying to make the second one, which came out in 2001, apparently. So, math isn't working. So, um, you just deduct 13 from 2001, and um, you'll get exactly when this movie came out. But, yeah. I see Elvira as being a cultural icon. And, um, so, yeah. So, I really enjoyed this movie. It had a lot of nostalgia, nostalgia for me. And, um... That's one of the reasons I'm giving it such a high, such high praise. Um, there's, there's at least benefit towards me in nostalgia. Um, it isn't giving away too much that eventually the townspeople have enough and try to try to burn her at the stake. And I can say that isn't a spoiler because if you look inside here, it right there. She's they burn her at the stake or they try to. So, um, yeah, and that is a plot point. So, um, that isn't even a spoiler, really. Um, but yeah, like I say, the movie is kind of cheesy, but that's the way I like it. But yeah, so overall, um, I think that if you like Elvira, and you should, she's super funny, very talented, and, um, it's it's a it's really a well written film I feel, and um, it might just be that I like. It might just be me, but I really enjoyed this movie. But anyways, that's just my opinion, and you can either take my opinion or leave it. Either way is fine. And if you like this content, then hey, make sure that you like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I upload. And if you want to support me in any way, all that information is in the description below. Um, YouTube is a full-time job for me. Anyways, thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great day.